Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Today, this morning, our gospel, we continue in, in Luke 8, chapter 18. We'll pick up right where we left off last week, actually. And um, so, interesting how it can sometimes appear like Jesus is kind of jumping around on different topics. And it's hard, sometimes we don't see how things transition and go and flow from one from one passage to, to the next. So remember, the last, the last sentence Jesus spoke last week was, but when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And then he's pick up right here. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. You're kind of, huh? Where do we, how do we get here? But if we back up and just continue to bring in a little context, I think we can read between the lines a little bit and see, see the, the transition, the flow, why Jesus uh, went here next. So remember the last, um, the context was Jesus was giving these, his teachings on the end times. So last week's teaching was the last, the end of that. Um, so we remember really briefly the, his teaching on the end times in that context. Remember, people were basically asking him, what will it be like at the end times, you know, when, when the Son of Man comes again? And he said, well, it will be like the, in the days of Noah and when he built the ark. Uh, and, you know, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, having a great old time and while Noah was building the ark. And then the flood came, wiped them all out. Or it will also be like in the days of Abraham and Lot when Sodom and Gomorrah was wiped out. You know, they were all eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, having a good old time, and did not even realize that Lot was leaving the town because fire was coming from heaven, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and if, we, if you looked back uh, closer in Genesis there, the original stories of those that Jesus is referencing, um, you can begin to see even deeper what it was like. Remember, just in the days of Noah, uh, it, it says that God, that God looked across the face of the earth and only Noah was found to be righteous. Everyone else, he said, was full of wickedness. Men, women, and children, full of wickedness in their actions and in their thoughts. So much so that it says that God, he was so sad at, at the lifestyles that he regretted making mankind. How bad does a child have to be before the parents regret giving birth to them? It's pretty bad, huh? This gives us a taste of what those times were like. And God only found Noah to be righteous. Not even his family, it says. His family got saved because of him. <laughs> now, in those days, don't you think, do, do you think all those people across the face of the earth, do you think they thought of themselves as wicked, evildoers? Oh, boy, I'm wicked today. I wonder if God's going to smite me today. I'm so wicked. You know? Well, how's God going to wipe us out? Because, boy, we are, we are evildoers, you know? And proud of it. You think they thought of themselves like that? No, it probably, probably most of those people back in Noah's day are, are like most of the people in our own day and how they see themselves. I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm a good person. I try to be a good person. I try to do good things and try to be kind to people. I'm, well, I'm not that, I don't do that. I don't, do, I don't really do bad stuff. <laughs> At least not really bad stuff. I'm okay. I just try to be a good person. Yeah, right? You're, you might, you're with me? Don't you think that's how they thought of, most of the people thought of themselves back in Noah's day? We're okay. Probably the same thoughts in the days of Lot when Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. Probably the same thoughts when Jesus was sharing on the, what the end times will be like. And no doubt he picked up on that and read some of their hearts 
I realize, oh, you, some of you think you're going to be okay, huh? <laughs> when the Son of Man comes again, <laughs> you think, oh, yeah, I'll be the faithful one. So Jesus says, okay, here's a parable for those who are convinced of their own righteousness, that they're okay. Because they try to be a good person, they try to do good things, or because they try to do what they're, because they're trying on their own actions. So to those who are convinced of their own righteousness, that they're okay, they despise others. Jesus tells this parable. Two people, they go up to the temple to pray. One's a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, poor Pharisee, is always getting picked on, you know. The Pharisee took up his position. But this is kind of funny irony, right? The Pharisee took up his position. They stand before God to pray. He takes up his position, and he spoke, he spoke this prayer to himself. <laughs> so who's his God, right? So who's his God? Oh, God, I'm so... Thank, I thank you I'm not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. Anybody ever think like that? Anybody ever think, anybody like me, and you think, boy, sometimes I think this world's going crazy. There's other people are going crazy. And there's this happening in the church, and that outside the church, and this in society, and that in California. And are we going crazy, mad, delusional? And inside, I'm thinking, I'm glad I'm not like the crazy ones. I'm glad I'm not like the rest of humanity. Maybe I'm the only one. I mean, after all, I go to Mass pretty much every day, three times on the weekends. <laughs> But the tax collector, he stands off at a distance, won't even raise his eyes to heaven. He can't even look at God. And he beats his breast and says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. How do you stand before God? How do you stand before God? When you come before God, do you bring all the things that you do? Or do you look to him for what he's done? Because the only thing that we can do that will justify us before God is ask him for mercy. It's the only thing we can do to be justified before God, to ask him for mercy. In other words, we see that sin is the great equalizer among us. It doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, or child, how old you are, how young you are, if you're black, white, purple, orange, yellow, or you don't know what you are. Doesn't matter what language you speak, what your race is, what nationality, culture, background. Doesn't matter who you're attracted to or who you're not attracted to. Doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, in the middle, or anything or everything or nothing. Doesn't matter if you're Catholic, non-Catholic Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, agnostic, nothing, everything. At the end of the day, when we all stand before God, we are all equal in his eyes. Sin equalizes all of us. And the only thing any of us can do to be justified, the only thing every one of us can do to be justified, is to ask for mercy. And we will stand there with some people we may not even like. Dodger fans. <laughs> I kind of mentioned all those groups. Hopefully one of those groups irks you a little. You know. You might, have, you might stand there before God with President Trump on your right and Biden on your left. God, you might be surrounded by MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News. One of those probably bugs you. <laughs> One of those probably despises you. And yet, among all of us, 
We're just equal before God as sinners. The Bible actually tells us, Scripture tells us that God sees all of mankind, every single one of us, as sinners so that he might show us his mercy. I love the, a quote from Pope Francis when he first became Pope. They're all trying to find out who he was. And they said, How do you, who are you? How do you see yourself? Or he said, well, I am a sinner in need of God's mercy. And I always, that always stood out to me. I always liked that. That's his foundational core identity of how he saw himself. I'm a sinner in need of God's mercy. How do you see yourself when you stand before God? Because no matter how many great things we've done, the only thing that justifies us is to say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, in the context of salvation, we have justification and sanctification. Justification wipes away the debt that we owe God because of our sin. Wipes it clean, buys us back from slavery to sin. We're justified because of faith in Jesus Christ crucified for us. And we accept when we, when we ask for that. Sanctif- so justification is what God does and gives to us, offers to us freely. Sanctification is what transforms our life into the life of Jesus Christ, Transform, that transformation. Sanctification is transformation. So justification is what God does. Sanctification is what we do with God in partnership when we say yes to his will in our life. Today is only about justification, that first step. Sanctification is another homily. So Father, we just turn to you with hearts so full of gratitude for your generous, loving mercy that you pour out across the face of the earth and into each one of our hearts every day. We pray today for extra grace, uh, extra power from your Holy Spirit to open our hearts more fully, um, to ask for and receive uh, a fresh outpouring of your mercy upon us today, a fresh realization of Uh, being justified in your sight, in your presence, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, because of his love for us. Help us to accept that so we might stand in your sight, in your presence, and look you in the eyes when we say, oh God, be merciful to us sinners. We pray all these things together. In Jesus' name, amen.